Now let's continue this conversation with Jamil Jaffer. He's the founder and executive director of the National Security Institute, also an associate professor and the director of the National Security Law and Policy Program at the Antonin Scalia Law School at George Mason University. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. A lot of people have questions about Grant Wall's death. It's certainly a tragedy, but we are dealing with those questions right now. So how important will an autopsy be to clearing up any suspicions about how he died? Well, there's no doubt that if the family wants an autopsy or the U.S. government decides it wants one, uh, they should get one. Uh, They're currently working with the Qatari authorities uh, to get the body uh, back to the United States so it can be repatriated so uh, the family can take the actions it needs to, whether that's burial um, or other other things, including uh, potentially an autopsy. And this is so much more complicated but because it's not a death within the United States. It's a death in a foreign country. How does that complicate things, though? Uh, you can't perform an autopsy in Qatar. Uh, you have to bring the body back, or, or would they be able to send somebody over there to do it as soon as possible and not have to wait for the transport of the body? How, how does this even work? Well, certainly they can work with the Qatari authorities to conduct an autopsy there in Qatar. Uh, they could bring the body back um, and do the autopsy here. Uh, those are all things the family has to make a decision about. The FBI, uh, if it's uh, conducting an investigation, uh, needs to assess. Uh, these are all things we don't know a lot of facts right now. We've heard uh, some of the stories about what happened specifically on site and how you know, he uh, he was treated and the like, but still a lot of those details to be gathered. Some of that's going to involve working with the law enforcement authorities there in Qatar and working with the FBI here in the United States. Um, if they do get involved, they're going to have to coordinate. They do have a legal attache there at the embassy uh, who can help coordinate those activities and make some decisions on the ground. Of course, if they are going to do an autopsy, time is of the essence. And so that will be an important part of that, do, deciding where and when that's to be done. Now, these are some hypotheticals here, and I'm going to label them as such. But if they do an autopsy if they find out there is reason to believe there might have been foul play what happens next from the u.s government standpoint and how they would be going about getting justice for somebody and again these are hypotheticals well of course you know we're a long way from that a lot of the facts have to be determined and assessed and an assessment has to be made about whether in fact there was foul play but if there's an assessment there might have been foul play then, of course, U.S. law enforcement authorities will need to coordinate uh, with local law enforcement authorities there in Qatar uh, to assess what happened, how this took place, who might be responsible. Uh, these things are always a challenge when things happen internationally uh, because you've got different law enforcement authorities, different jurisdictions, and different laws that apply. Um, but there is a standard process for doing this. Um, there are uh, treaties that govern uh, the sharing of information and the like. Um, and we have a fairly strong relationship with the nation of Qatar in the sense that we have diplomatic relations with them. Uh, there is a U.S. embassy there. Um, and there is an opportunity to engage in those law enforcement interactions to figure out if, in fact, something did happen, what exactly took place. But again, as you, as you point out correctly, Mitch, we're a long way from that. Well, uh, we hope they get to the bottom of it if there is something to get to the bottom, too. Jamil, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me.